ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to week number 13, 13, 12, week 12 of the No Pun Intended podcast here on Entertainment Buddha. We're flying through through the football season. I can't even keep track of what week it is. Um, be sure to check us out on entertainmentbuddha.com where we make you a better geek one post at a time. With me as always is the number nerd himself, Mr. Justin Ludwig. Yep, the same man who once made it the entire way through Contra on the Nintendo Entertainment System without dying. I did it once. Ooh. And never that's, again. It was like that impressive. one magical moment. That's very impressive. Is that something you uh, you might stream on Twitch? Yeah, I think so. I'm going to give right. it another whirl again. Yeah, yeah, you might as well. It's just the planets aligned. There's just enough, just the right amount of grease on the joystick. Everything just everything, lined right up for you. Everything all worked out. Wow. That's that's fantastic. Place of life, I guess. Yeah. That'd yeah, you know, we, we get we get those every once in a while. <laughs> uh yeah, anyway, uh kind of a crazy week. Crazy. Week. Kind of crazy. Understatement. Yeah. Yeah, we had uh Texans beating the Browns, we had the Chiefs beating the Seahawks. We had Bengals beating the Saints in New Orleans. Uh, Rams beat the Broncos. That was the uh, big one. Yeah, and then and then of course the Packers demolishing uh, my beloved Eagles. Um, um, unfortunately, are we that surprised? Well, if you recall, I picked the Packers, but I know. Well, and I hated myself for it. And I still hate <laughs> myself. So, I mean, yeah, I picked correctly, but I'm not proud of that. Like an idiot. But that's what you get when you. That's why they lost because you had no faith. They figured they were like, you know what? If 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 he can't get behind us, then why even try? I know. Let's just let's just go home early, get dressed before the fourth quarter's over. Let's let's pull the Garrett Blunt and just leave before the game's over. Oh, I was just making it. Oh yeah, somebody did that. I was just making it up. I was just like, let's pack it in. No, well, somebody Le- actually Le- did do that. Yeah, Legarrette Blunt left the game in the fourth quarter, went after zero carries, and has since been released from the team. So he's, I don't even know how many years, he's been in the league a couple years, and he's heading off for team number five or six or something like that. Yeah, the Pittsburgh so, uh, front office was like, if you don't show up Monday, don't bother coming in Tuesday. And Legarrette Blunt's like, all right, four-day weekend. <laughs> Yeah, uh, some other news. Adrian Peterson's done for the year. He was suspended without pay for the rest of the season. Uh, he is appealing that. Uh, let's see, what else was there? Uh, Cleveland Browns cut Ben Tate. They had a kind of a three-headed monster there at running back. They now have uh, Isaiah Kroll and uh, Terrence West as the top two positions. I like Terrence um, West. Yeah. Saints, Brandon Cooks is on the IR and that does just about does it. It's a bummer for them. Yeah. Yeah. I liked him. I liked him. He, I mean, he wasn't, didn't have much, you know, didn't really have a consistent year, but he had a few games where he really, really uh, shined. So kind of tough, but yeah, that's what happens in, in football. People get hurt. People leave games early. Teams win that aren't See. supposed to win. Yeah, teams win that aren't supposed to win. We move on. So how did uh, how did our picks turn out from last week? Well, speaking of not supposed to win, uh, the lines that we had used last Tuesday, the favorites went five and nine. The home hmm. team went eight and six, though, which is a little curious. Yeah, it is curious. Uh, you, of course, had your seven wins, so you went seven and seven. I went six and eight. Uh, we both. Got kind of burned on games like San Diego, who was giving 10 points. They only won by seven. Right. Uh, you guessed correctly on Arizona. I guessed incorrectly with Detroit. We both guessed wrong on the Broncos. We I both recall. guessed wrong on the Broncos. Exactly. Well, I don't know how we could have. Uh, yeah. There's no reason to. Um, let's see. What were the other weird ones? Oh, Cleveland got trounced, and so did we. Did you take uh, New Orleans? I did. I took Cincinnati. You did. So there's that. Um, we both got boned by Pittsburgh only winning by three. Oh yeah, yeah. I couldn't believe that game. That was that was a good uh, good fight by the Titans. 
It's a good burger you know, battle. They yeah. love just saying burgers. <laughs> they did. Burger. They did. Breathless burger. <laughs> they certainly did. Uh, yeah, if, if Medenberger didn't have that pick six, you know, at the beginning of the game, it could turn out a lot differently for Tennessee. But you know, it's it's a positive sign for him at least. They're even losing by three to the Steelers. You can't be super bummed about it, right? And I was not expecting the Patriots to blow out the Colts. Mm, I kind of saw not that. not by twenty two. I kind of saw that coming in in Indianapolis. I kind of saw that coming. Mm. Just trust me. Uh, I, I don't I, know if I don't know if I believe you. Yeah, I kind of saw that coming. All right. You know what I didn't see coming? Speaking of the guy who was projected to uh, score two points, because he's had. Let's see. I looked this up earlier. Because I was just, I, 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 I'm not buying into the hype. Anyway, one of my fantasy thrillers is Mr. Jonas Gray, running back for the New England Patriots, because he had yeah. 38 carries for 199 yards and four scores. Four scores. Yeah, that was that was crazy. I mean, I was glad they were giving him the ball because I was playing against Shane Vereen in fantasy. So I was I was glad to see every time you know a running back went in the end zone, it was it was great, but. I mean that's yeah that's one of those games where it's it's the Patriots so you never know who's going to start at running back or who they're going to give the ball to. Well, that's what and, I mean. It's it's it's, yeah. it's tough to buy into this guy just because of what team he's playing for. Yeah, next week he might have you know three carries for five yards and that's it. Well, I mean, if you're looking for another running back, he's only owned right now in 9.3% of uh, ESPN leagues. I'm sure the price of poker is going to go way up for him. Yeah. He's projected yeah, people, for 11 right now. Yeah, especially especially at this time of the year when uh, fantasy teams are starting to think about playoffs and trying to get their uh, their roster in line. Oh, with, yeah. With some more bye weeks and everything coming up, too, so... Oh yeah, the the yeah. Uh, the real challenge is that he's going up against uh, a Detroit running defense, which is pretty good. Right. Yeah. So yeah, it's going to be a little little tough. So that that might be a pass heavy game for for Mr. Brady. So we'll see. I'm going to head myself anyway. I did have another thriller. Um, it's Mr. Mike Evans from the Tampa Bay Bucks. Ah uh, yes, I did play against him in in my one league, so that that wasn't fun. Jonas Gray was the easy pick. I didn't want to go too easy. But yeah. Mike Evans, projected for 13, ended up with 34, seven receptions, 209 yards, two touchdowns. And they, they trounced the Redskins. Yeah, they did. Or excuse me, the Washington professional football team. Pretty good case for Mike Evans, uh, Offensive Rookie of the Year for the NFC. Yeah, it might be a toss-up between him and Calvin Benjamin. Mm. Calvin, Calvin Benjamin's had a pretty consistent season. Mike Evans kind of, you know, had a... Had spotty games here and there, but part part of that could be the QB situation in Tampa. Yeah, actually, probably a lot of that's a QB situation in Tampa. A lot of that. A lot of that. Um, yeah. All right. So, so that's that's it. You didn't you didn't have the Packers defense as a thriller. Eh, I guess I could have. Yeah, I don't know how many they were projected, but what they had like three touchdowns, I think. Let me see. I mean, going something, to, going something to the crazy. database. Yeah. Satellites are linking up. They were projected for uh, for four. They ended up with 20. Okay. Three scores, two interceptions, two fumbles, 20 points allowed. And one disappointed yeah. Eagles fan. And one disappointed Eagles fan. They don't count that. You, you don't see that in the uh, the box score. No. That's kind of the uh, the extracurriculars that you don't see. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the emotional value you can't put a number on. Yeah, sometimes it's not about the X's and O's. Yeah. All right. Well, it's who do you have for cases. who do you have for tr- uh, Chiller this uh, week? I didn't have a lot of picks. I don't know. I don't feel like there was a clear leader for the Chiller this week. Um, I chose Calvin Johnson only because of the hype that he's kind of built up, especially after his return. Mm-hmm. Uh, last week he was projected for fifteen. He had five. Five catches for 59 yards, which, yeah. I don't know. It's not too terrible. No, but, it's... Yeah, they... Patrick Peterson, for the Cardinals, you know, was able to keep him in check, which was which was huge. Yeah. For sure. But, uh... They also didn't do so well in offense as a unit, so... Right, right. 
Yeah, that that Cardinals defense is tough. Even with the injuries they've had this year, they've they've proven to be uh, proven to be still be very good. Uh, oh, I guess I should add myself as a chiller because last week I didn't pull the trigger on uh, betting cookies on the Cardinals to win the NFC West and in a parlay with anybody in the uh, AFC North. Mm-hmm. The odds have since uh, switched. They are now the favorite, and I believe the last time I saw it was uh, minus 300. So uh. I'm an idiot. <laughs> Gambling's fun, isn't it? I really, oh, I, I, I really did sit here for like 20 minutes when I saw that line for Arizona yeah. because it was it was right at that point where Drew, you know Drew Stanton's going to start for them for a while, and they're two games up, and it's kind of like, you know, who's who's going to fall apart first? Arizona, with Drew Stanton being their quarterback, or the rest of the NFC West? Right. And, and you I, didn't you didn't trust Drew Stanton? Nope, I chose poorly. So now yeah. the Cardinals are up by three games with six to play. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like... Uh, <sighs> A pretty, a pretty firm lock. I'm an idiot. If, hey, don't beat yourself up. This happens. This happens. Drew you learn, Stanton. You, you learn from your mistakes and you move on. Wow, he started. He started four games already. I should. Ugh, I had. Yeah. Da- uh, I had data to go on. I'm so stupid. Now you know. Cardinals are now the fourth. And knowing favorite. is half the battle. Cardinals are now the fourth favorite to win the Super Bowl behind Denver in front of San Francisco. Who else is up there? Uh, it's New England, Green Bay, Denver, Arizona, San Fran, Seattle. That's weird. Yeah, they're still still hyped on Seattle. I I don't know if it's is it just because they won last year that you know they automatically automatically get the nod. I guess that's pretty high, though. They're not even if the playoffs started today, they wouldn't even be in the playoffs. Yeah, literally not in the playoffs. Hmm. Uh, where was I? Uh, Arizona, San Francisco, Seattle, Dallas, Indianapolis, Kansas. Oh, Kansas City should be higher. Yeah, they still haven't thrown a touchdown to a receiver, have they? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. What did they do last game? Uh, Jamal Charles had two touchdowns. Uh, who had? Who scored for this? Let's see. Jamal, Jamal Charles, Charles Jamal two. Charles. Niall Davis, nope. Yeah, so they had three rushing touchdowns last week. Mm-hmm. That's bizarre. Did... I wonder if that's ever happened. I don't know, but that is, that is crazy. I want to see... Leading receiver was a tight end, so yeah, with thirty-seven yards. Is that their lead? Their top two leading receivers was tight end Travis Kelsey and running back Jamal Charles. Cardinals are minus two fifty to win the division. Minus two fifty. That blows. If only we had a DeLorean. Uh, what might have been? Who do you think the favorite is to win the NFC East? The NFC East. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. Probably probably Dallas. Wrong. Eagles? Yep. No, Giants. <laughs> no, it's Eagles. I'm kidding. Okay. Well, I thought Eagles, but I thought after the way they played on uh Sunday that might have knocked them down. Yeah, I mean they bit, they but... are of all the favorites, they're the least likely, the least favored. Okay. After that, yeah, that's Nolans and NFC South. Yeah. Where they lead the division at a robust four and six. That division's so bad. So bad. I can't It's gonna be it's gonna be frustrating when, when a ten win team doesn't make the playoffs because uh an eight and eight or seven and nine NFC South winner is gonna get in. But he, wow. Here's one I don't get. Uh, the Colts are, I mean, I guess it's the Colts, but the Colts are minus 1,400 to win their division, and they are leading the Texans by one game. I just, yeah. I just think nobody believes in the Texans. They're just winning crap games. I guess. Patriots are minus yeah. 5,000. 
Yeah, they're they're looking pretty good right now. You have to bet five thousand cookies to win a hundred cookies on the Patriots. On the Patriots. The Kansas City Chiefs are the most enticing, plus three hundred. They are tied. No, well, technically, I think they get the tie break. No, they don't. Wait, is this is this for a Super Bowl or for division? Division. Plus three hundred wow, really? to win the AFC West. Yeah. That is enticing. The Broncos only have it right now because if they, they beat Kansas City earlier. Right. Yeah, they had the tiebreaker. But as of right now, they're tied. Let's see. What's their... Yeah, what's the rest of that schedule look like for... Uh... Chiefs are at Oakland, home for Denver, at Arizona, home for Oakland, at Pittsburgh, home for San Diego. Hmm. The, uh, the Broncos are... I got the Broncos here. They're uh, Miami... Kansas City, Buffalo, San Diego, Cincinnati, Oakland. Hmm. So they have a tough they AFC have, yeah, it's pretty team tough. in Miami next week, followed by a division game where they're at Kansas City on Sunday night. And then Buffalo at San Diego at Cincinnati versus Oakland. Hmm. The city's just hot right now. Yeah. Yeah, and the way the Broncos played against the Rams last week, that could be that could that could spell some trouble well, for, uh, well, for Peyton. Well, but here's here here's the thing to keep in mind. Kansas City almost did this last year. They won the first nine, then they finished out uh uh two and two and five. So mm-hmm. it's not like they haven't done this before. Well, yeah, and then that first round of playoffs, they were up by like a million points against the Colts, and Andrew Luck came back and and won. So. That was kind of deflating. After they scored a million points? Yeah. You'd think if you scored a million points that, you know, you would win, but... No. Andrew Luck scored a million and won, and that's all he needed. That's why we play four quarters. (laughs) LeGarrette. Yeah. Guess he didn't get that memo. Well, now he's got all the time to read the memo. Yeah. That four-day weekend. (laughs) All right, you ready to get to the picks? Anyway... Let's get down to brass tacks. Yeah. Speaking of Kansas City, we have them Thursday night against Oakland. Kansas City's minus seven and a half. What a terrible Thursday game. Kansas. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take Kansas City. This is here. Here's the dumb thing. This is all the makings of the uh, the blowout trap. Go on. When was the last time this happened? This happened before. Where was it? Oh, New England, uh, the Jets. Yeah. Going, in, going into it, you'd think that New England would have kicked the crap out of them, but they only won by two. Right. It's just all the makings of a trap game. And by trap, I mean, you think the Chiefs are going to wallop them, but it's going to be closer than seven and a half. So the Chiefs will probably still win, but it'll be a cover by Oakland. So, so are we changing our pick to Oakland? No, I'm taking Kansas City. I'm just saying. I'm just saying for the record. Yeah. I want it to be known that when this happens, that you, I wasn't you. completely <laughs> caught by surprise. All right. Point taken. Uh, yeah, yeah. The stenographer wrote it down too, so yeah. it's in the record. Let it be known. All right. Yeah, I'll take Kansas City too. Uh, we should also note this is the last week for buys, and they are Pittsburgh and Carolina. Hallelujah. We can Sorry, say bye, bye, bye to the bye week. Sorry, who's on bye this week? I was celebrating. Pittsburgh, Carolina. Just two. Just two. So it's not like LeGarrette Blount had a game to go to next week anyway. So he, he, he just wanted to get a head start on the on the weekend. He had a yep. he had a trip planned. How long weekend? Yeah. Fifteen day weekend? Yeah. Oh, I did see uh Steve Smith Sr. Made made the comment that he was since he's on a buy he was going to go on a uh, quote unquote five million dollar vacation because that's the amount that Carolina paid him not to play for them this year. So he was kind of rubbing it in their faces like, uh, I got five million extra dollars. I'm going to use it for vacation on the bye week." So I'd I'd be interested to know what what that vacation is like. But ho- hopefully, uh, there's there's some news on that. Yeah, yeah, it was something something crazy like that. They're like, here's five million dollars not to play for us. Maybe he'll make omelets out of Fabergé eggs. 
that would be quite frivolous. Tasty, I'm sure frivolous. That's frivolous, the point. Yeah, yeah. Uses uh, Action Comics number one to light a cigar. <laughs> yeah, why not? Then he's got two. He's still got two million left over. Yeah, yeah. He's fine. All right, who we got next? We got Cleveland at Atlanta. Atlanta's minus three and a half. Atlanta's minus three and a half. I know. No, Cleveland back did. Cleveland. Cleveland did get uh, did get beat by the Texans pretty handily on Sunday. Atlanta is coming off a win, even if it is against Tampa. Uh, Carolina. No, they beat Tampa. Wait, what? Did I, what? At Atlanta. Atlanta beat Carolina last week. I'm looking way too far behind. Yeah, that was a test, and you passed. Good job. Good. Paying attention. Yep. Focus. Um, yeah, Atlanta beat barely beat Carolina last week, nineteen seventeen. Playing at home, Cleveland secondary is really good. I don't, I don't see Atlanta winning that game. Plus, Josh Gordon's back. Mm, so that's, that's kind the of X a, factor. That's kind of the X factor. He could be. I, I, I haven't heard if he's expected to get a, a lot of targets or if he's only going to be in. You know, a few plays. I would imagine he'd be in basically the whole game. Yeah, no um, reason not to. Yeah. Um, you know, assuming that he's stayed in shape and on his uh, off time. Um, I'll, I'll take Cleveland. Cleveland plus three and a half with, with their secondary and Josh Gordon back. Yeah, I'm kind of regretting my... I'm taking Atlanta, but now that I do remember that... Oh, boy. You're allowed to change your mind. I'll, I'll allow it. No, I'll stick with it. I already wrote it down. You can't erase it once it's in Excel. All right. I don't know. That's a lot to play for. Mm-hmm. If they win, oh, it's, it's like a four-way race for the AFC North. Who's yeah. The, who's the favorite there? Why is there, why is there not like a weird... Oh, that's why, because they don't have odds. That's all they get you. It's it's a pick'em division. Maybe it is. I don't know. Close your eyes, throw a dart. Yeah, they had it last week. Everybody was. Uh, I thought everyone was like around the same. Yeah, I mean that AFC North is wide, is open. still wide open. It's it's as wide open as as the NFC South is for Atlanta. It's as wide open as Legarrette Blount's schedule. <laughs> uh, too, too soon. Yeah. Too soon. Uh, that was good. I like that. Well, I'm taking Atlanta, but I, right. I know I'm going to get burned. Well, I'm, t- I'm, I'm allowing a change. No. All right. No. I'll just, all right. I'm extending the hand of courtesy and you're just slapping it away. Yep. All right. I'll, I'll remember that for next time. They call me the gambler. 15 yeah. points. Josh Gordon is projected for 15 points. Oh boy. For, for his first game since last season. Oh yeah. He's owned in 68.3% of leagues. Yeah, I know. Uh, He's I know one of my. Line. I know one of my leagues. He was, you know, my twelve team league. He was drafted, and I'm pretty sure uh, the guy that drafted him held on to him this whole time. I can believe it. Yeah, I can believe it. Yeah, players are players are at a premium when it comes to twelve team leagues and nineteen spots. Yeah, you got a you have a pretty large lineup too. So. Yeah, yeah, we do. That'll do it. Yeah. This next one, I'm a little concerned about. It's a bugaboo Ten- game. It's a bugaboo Tennessee, game. Tennessee at Philadelphia. Phillies minus 11. What are my bugaboos? Double digit spreads. Double digit spreads. Rookie quarterbacks. Rookie quarterbacks. Uh, guys with the last name ending in burger. Mm, I get more hungry than anything. Well, yeah, I guess that's that's a different bugaboo. But. I just think about burger challenges. Anyway, <laughs> Tennessee. I don't like the double digit spread. I'm not I saying Philly won't win. I'm just saying they're coming off that uh, that spanking at Green Bay. Yeah, Tennessee doesn't do super poorly Monday night against Pittsburgh, or maybe Pittsburgh just doesn't play very well. I don't know. Yeah, that's what I can't figure out. I can't figure out if, if Tennessee played really well or if Pittsburgh just kind of played down to their level. I think it's the second one. Although uh, Bell had like 200 yards rushing, didn't he? Mm-hmm. It's so battle 7-3 versus 2-8. Yeah, with a double-digit spread. 
with a double digit spread. It's just it's it's it reeks of garbage time touchdowns. It it does, but I'm I'm gonna take Philly. Okay. I'm gonna take Philly at minus eleven. You still believe in the Sanchez? Well, I never believed in him. I believe in Chip Kelly. Let's let's get that clear. Um, you know, I believe you know Lashawn McCoy, Darren Sproles, they're they're still a threat, even though McCoy hasn't had a, as great a year as, as previous years. But no, I believe in uh, Sproles for sure. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely a threat. Um, Eagles' defense is is still good. Granted, they gave up fifty some. Well, three of those those touchdowns last week were defensive, so that wasn't the Eagles' defensive fault, but. And they were playing against Aaron Rodgers, who's so hot right now. Um, I don't know. I don't. I think the Eagles can can handle that with with uh, Mark Sanchez at quarterback. Yeah, it's hard he to was, believe in uh, anybody for Tennessee. That's I yeah. guess that's kind of the other side of it. Is who do you who can really, um, you know, do the damage for Tennessee? It's like right. Kendall Wright. He's a possession guy. Bishop Sankey. So. Yeah. I mean, Nate Washington did have that 80-yard touchdown catch, but other than that this year, he yeah. hasn't really done anything. Um, and and at least in defense of, of Sanchez, at the beginning of that Packers game, he was making good throws. His receivers just weren't catching him. So he was, you know, he did start out playing okay, but then, you know, by the time he started turning the ball over, they were already getting crushed anyway. So, you know, he's kind of getting a little more desperate, but that's that's my excuse for him. They should but, put in their backup. Well, when you have one USC quarterback, you have them all. So what's the difference, right? I guess. But yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I'm a, I'm I'm nervous. I'm not nervous. Like I don't think the Eagles will lose that game. I'm just a little nervous with that spread. But I think I think the Eagles can do it. He does gel very pretty pretty well with that offense. Yeah. Yeah, and plus he's back in Philly, so he has motivation to go back to, to win and get. Wait, get which a one does he go to? Uh, I think. Pants, didn't he? I thought it was Chino's. Well, now I can go to the other one. Yeah, there's also gyms on South Street, which is really good. And then when Baseball Tonight has a game in Philly, and they do the the thing with John Cruck, they can say, "Well, what do you <laughs> think, Mark Sanchez?" My my favorite was. Uh, the one Phillies game was, was uh, like a Sunday night or Wednesday night baseball game, and they had um, uh, Crucker go out to – he went to Pat's and he went to Geno's, got a cheesesteak, sat down, takes takes a bite of one, chews it, looks up, thinks for a second, takes another bite of the same one, chews it, thinks for a second, grabs the other one, takes a couple bites of that. You know, normally when people on TV do something like that, they show – you know, they take like one bite and they're like, okay, that's – that's it. I'm going with this one, but um, I don't know. I thought it was funny that he just kept kept eating. He's like, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna need a few more bites to think about it. Yeah, I don't know. I need I need I need another bite. <laughs> nah, I don't know. Need another bite. I need another cheesesteak. Yeah. Uh, this first cheesesteak, I couldn't figure it out. I need another cheesesteak. More, cheese more I need onions. One. I need. Can I get a refill on this soda? But yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe being back in Philly will, will help Sanchez out a little bit. So we'll see. We'll see. Uh, next one you had you had mentioned it earlier. Detroit's at New England. New England's minus seven. It sounds like something I did. Uh, uh, New England's pretty hot right now. Pretty they are. hot. They're they're very hot. Uh, they're, you might describe them as tepid. No, torrid, torrid. torrid. They're having yeah. a torrid run of games. Not tepid. Yeah. That's that's not what I want. It's the wrong adjective. Oh, going back to Sanchez, I found the cheesesteak answer. Uh, let's see. I hope it was one way off the map. He went no. He he actually went to both. He went to Pat's and Gino's, so he did take in both both of the legendary spots. We were all wrong. He went to the Reading Terminal Market. He had cheesesteak <laughs> there and a cookie, black and white cookie. Uh, he just went to Wawa and got a turkey bowl. He got a gobbler. <laughs> um, which is back yeah, on this, the menu. Yes. Uh, going back to the New England game, I yeah, New England's just just too hot right now. I mean, even even if they're not going to have much of a running game against Detroit's front line, uh, I think Brady will be able to pass against that secondary. And 
New England's New England's secondary has been very solid this year. Um, so it might might be another tough game for Calvin and, and Matthew Stafford. I'm trying to think of something more interesting than this line because I don't have any interest in New England minus seven at all. At all. I think they're gonna blow out Detroit. It's in New England. Um You could you could tease that to minus one. Yeah, uh, I could. I'm trying to. I'm unless, trying to unless, I'm trying to unless think you're of a, a unless more you're super com- stipulation. Yeah, unless you're super confident New England's gonna gonna win by seven, then like uh, take the cookies and run. Yeah. What about who gets more yards? Uh, Jonas Gray rushing yards or Calvin Johnson receiving yards? Hmm, that is interesting. See, I'm trying like to I said, I, I feel like Jonas Gray is going to get like six carries this week. I know. That's how it always goes. Yeah. I'm just trying to make it more fun because I feel like New England minus seven is... I feel confident in that. And naturally, that means that it's going to go the exact opposite. Yeah. You, you think that's that's an easy, easy bet. Teaser. I'd love that. Yeah. Uh, ESPN seems to think that Jonas Gray will be the feature back and will have at least 18 carries. Okay. How many, how many did he have last week? Like 30, 38? He had 38. Okay. Yeah, they got their running game going last week, and when Bill Belichick finds something that works, he sticks with it. He had 38 carries, which was six more than he's had the rest of the season. Yeah. I wonder if that's, I wonder if that's the highest total for carries in the game this year. Uh, that's a good question. Or as Le- Le'Veon Bell might have had a game where he was up there too, if I recall. If only there was some, if only there was some depository of information that we can reserve. Well, that's the dumb thing is that last week there were three backs that had more than thirty carries: Jonas Gray, thirty-eight; Alfred Blue had thirty-six mm-hmm. for the Texans, and Le'Veon Bell had thirty-three yeah. for Pittsburgh. Uh, that's I wonder if one. I feel like Demarco Murray probably had a lot in in some of those hundred yard games too. Well, they they usually try and cap him, right? Around you know high twenties, they usually try and relax that. Uh, week three we had three: Rashad Jennings, Niall Davis, Donald Brown. The most was thirty four. Just trying to see if anybody else. No, nobody's hit that forty mark. Uh, DeMarco had 31 in week five. Okay. Um, week six. This is where we need a little bit of, uh, stat checking music. Mark Ingram had 30 in week nine. Fact check, fact check, check, fact check. Fact check, check. We'll be back. And we're back. And we're back. Good timing. Uh, Now Jonas Gray has the most of the season so far. Yeah. There you go. All right. So we're both taking New England on that. Yep. Okay. How about the next one? Here's here's another double digit for you. Green Bay at Minnesota. Green Bay's minus 10. Bugaboo. Yeah, but it's a bad quarterback at home. Minus 10. Green Bay's on the road. Bad That's quarterback true. at home. Teddy Bridgewater, much to my disappointment, has not been uh, as good as I was hoping for this year. But he's a rookie, so I'm chalking up to that. That's true. And I blame their inconsistent running back situation. Yeah. Yeah, they had their leading rusher last week was Sandejo for he had one rush for 48 yards. I don't know why they just don't pick one. One week yeah. they feature Matt Asiata, one week they feature McKinnon. Yeah. Yeah, it's I, I guess I guess they don't feel uh feel comfortable giving giving the full load to to just one of them. Let's see. Yeah, McKinnon had eight carries for thirty eight yards. Asiata had one carry for two yards. Two whole yards. Yeah. 
taking Green Bay. They're too hot. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take Green Bay also. Too you're hot. not you're not worried about the, the double digit bug bugaboo. No, it's Green Bay. They've they've been on a tear as of late. They've scored fifty points in the last two games. Uh, their lowest margin of victory this season was three games. Uh, let's see. Seven, 21, 32, three, 21, and then a lot. <laughs> I feel comfortable with 10. All right. Yeah. I'll, I'll take green Bay as well. They've got the capability to score a lot of points. They do. They do. Yeah. Jordy Nelson's just him and Randall Cobb. Getting passes from Aaron Rodgers, it's it's just not fair. Passes from Aaron Rodgers, it's just not fair. But that's why he gets the big bucks. That's why he gets a State Farm commercial with Kevin Nealon and Dan, Dana Carvey, Hans and Franz. Yeah, uh, I'm glad they stayed one. relevant with those uh, pop culture yeah. references. Yeah. Yeah, I was I was a little surprised to see Hans and Franz in a in a commercial. Surprised in a, in a good way. When was the last time they were on SNL? Um, I don't I don't know if they ever did like a reunion thing, like when like when Dana Carvey like hosted after he left. Like I don't know if they ever did that, but as far as the the reg, like when they were on the show, when Neil and Carvey were on the show, that would have been. Mid mid nineties, mid mid to late nineties, something like that. Yeah, I don't know. Late eighties, uh, wow. Yeah, it was close. It's good enough for government work. Yeah, yeah, you know, there's mid mid eighties to mid nineties, kind of, kind of, kind of a blur for me. <laughs> yeah, those uh, <laughs> early toddler years. Er, yeah, not, was, not something you uh, retained. Yeah. Yeah, not not so much. Um, it's a, lot of, a lot of Garfield and friends. That's all you remember. Yeah, Garfield and Ducktales. Let's see. Ecto cooler. Speaking yeah. of not close, <laughs> Jacksonville and Indy, fourteen points. I I don't I hate like it. That. I hate it. I, yeah. I'm gonna take Jacksonville. I just I, I think it's say, I'm gonna high. pencil you in for Jacksonville. Fourteen yeah. is too many. Yeah. It's just Especially with Denard Robinson. Yeah. Yeah, and and Blake Bortles is capable of throwing some uh garbage time touchdowns. I mean Yeah, that's fourteen's just too high. Bortles, Hearns, Robinson Shorts. So attorneys, here's, at, attorneys at law. Here's here's the wrinkle. Do you would you take Jacksonville in a teaser plus twenty? Uh probably. I mean that's that's probably not a game I would tease. There's probably I'd probably go with other options. Just in case, you know, in the event that Indy does blow them out. You know, if Indy wins like thirty five nothing. Yeah. You know, but realistically at minus four or at plus fourteen I'll take Jacksonville. But I would probably stay away from a tease on that just just in the event that a blowout does occur. Just in the event. Mm-hmm. That's fair. Yeah, I don't I don't like teasing underdogs for more points. I like I, I'm more comfortable teasing, you know, the favorites. That's the real skill. Favorites down. Like yeah, like I'd rather take New England at, at tease that down to New England minus one instead of Detroit plus thirteen. Oh, when they do lose, they do yeah. lose pretty big. Yeah. Yeah, that's the only thing that that concerns me. But yeah, yeah, that that minus fourteen is just a little too high for well, my taste. Well, we'll we'll chew on this since they've started using Denard Robinson as their feature back. Their their biggest loss. They have two at this this number. They have two losses at fourteen points, both Miami and Dallas. Mm-hmm. Those were. Home games. Their away game loss was 10 points. Okay. To who? Uh, Cincy. 
Since they've started using Denard Robinson. Since they've started using Denard Robinson as their feature back in week seven. Okay. Before that, they've had bigger bigger right. losses. Uh, at Washington, they lost by 31. Home for Indy, they lost 44 to 17. Okay. So that's the one sort of litmus test. Yeah, that, that Denard Robinson, uh, he's, he's an X-factor. When when he came into the league, his actual position was listed as X factor. X factor. It wasn't wide receiver or running back. Or That's like an XFL was, kind of thing. What's that? It's like an XFL kind of thing. Yeah, but like he was actually for a brief period listed as X factor when when it showed his position. Because nobody knew if he because he played quarterback at Michigan, but coming into the NFL, uh, you know they didn't really expect him to play quarterback. They kind of tried it out, didn't really work. But as a running back and, and receiver, um, he's kind of flourished. Which is good for, you know, I'm, I'm kind of happy for him. I, I like him. I think he's a good player. Let's see. What do we have next? We have Cincinnati at Houston. Houston's minus one and a half. You there? Uh... I don't understand Denard Robinson's uh, college stats. It's all over the place. Yeah. I'm just. Oh, I don't know. I'm. I can't. I can't be bothered. Uh, <laughs> I feel like since he's on the uh, the up and up. I think so. After last week's win at uh at New Orleans. Kinda. Not really, but I don't even, not think that. Yeah. Even after uh, Ryan Mallett took care of the Browns in Cleveland. Are you putting your faith in uh, Ryan Mallett or Alfred Blue? Um, mix. Ooh, good answer. I don't know. I I I haven't I haven't taken Houston, so I'm I'm not sure. Like I want to believe that since he's on the up and up, but they've been up and down more recently. Up and you down. Know. You're right. Andy, Andy Andy Dalton has that terrible terrible Thursday night game against the Browns. Then he comes out, has a great game against the Saints. You know, it's just hard to say what he's going to do next. He's not very consistent. But Cincinnati getting one and a half, uh, I feel I feel comfortable taking Cincy. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Be yeah, really nice I, to tease that up too. Yeah. There you go. It would it would be nice to. Uh, to see a few more games out of Ryan Mallett before I can make a, a definitive decision, but An informed opinion. That's fair. Yeah. So I'm just going to assume that he's going to lose this game. <laughs> Since That's, he is in the driver's <laughs> seat for the, uh, the AFC North. So yeah. Yeah. All those teams are still over 500, right? So there's that. Uh, yes, they all are. AFC North is all over 500. NFC South is all under 500. Yin to the yang. Quid pro quo. Yeah. Tit for tat. North for south. It's, it's AFC bizarre. for NFC. It's bizarre division. Up is down. North is south. Black is white. You say hello when you leave and goodbye when you arrive. Wouldn't it be bad by? I love that episode. It's It's pretty good. Uh, let's see what else we got here. AFC East battle. Yes. Jets, Buffalo, four and a half points for Buffalo. I'm mm, taking Buffalo. That's, you're taking Buffalo? Yeah. Jets are coming off the bye. Jets coming off the bye after that big win against Pittsburgh? Yeah, but he, he, you ready for this? Bye teams last week. Uh, week, uh, I got to do math. Uh, week 10 bye. You hate were, that. I do. Uh, Indianapolis, Minnesota, New England, San Diego, Washington, Houston. Those were the week 10 buys. Let's see. Houston did win. Washington did not win. San Diego. What did they do? They did win. New England did win. Minnesota did not win. Indianapolis, by virtue of playing another team on the bye, did not. So it's hit or miss. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to, uh, it's tough. 
Two and eight versus five and five. Do you feel confident in Michael Vick? That's uh, a real question. Do you feel comfortable with Michael Vick? But do you feel comfortable with Kyle Orton? More than I do. Uh, the Bills. The Bills put up three field goals against Miami last week. Kyle Orton was twenty two of thirty nine for one hundred and ninety three yards. Here is what I don't feel comfortable with: the Bills' running game. Booby Dixon was ten for thirty five yards. Exactly. I don't like that. Yeah. Nineteen a- carries as a team for fifty four yards. That's yeah. garbage. That's bush league. I'm going to take the Jets. I'm going to go out on a limb here a little bit. Jets plus plus four and a half. I like it. Yeah. Don't agree with it, but yeah, I'm allowed to I, that. Yeah, you're allowed. You're allowed. I don't. I, I that's a game I'll probably stay away from. But when it comes when it comes to the cookies, but for for sake of this podcast, I'm I'm going to take the Jets. Uh, I think Buffalo's kind of a little on a downward slope. Yeah, they're kind of out uh, of it. Yeah. Even a wild card, their uh, grip is slipping. Yeah. Wow, that's weird. Uh, AFC, there are two five and five teams. Uh, behind them are two two and eight teams, and then it just gets bad. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of, speaking of bad, I'm pretty sure this is going to be the far TV game. I hope so. I really hope so. Tampa at Chicago. Ugh. Chicago minus six. My rule of thumb this season is betting against Chicago when they're the favorite. Last week it wouldn't work, but... Well, yeah, they finally I, won I their first home game last week. Well, I had a hunch about last week. This week yeah. I have a hunch that Tampa's going to not lose by more than six. You think so? Yep. ET's tease that up to 12. Yeah. Good. I'm going to take Chicago. If what about the T's? Would you feel better? But if it was Tampa plus twelve, uh, Tampa plus twelve, I would I would probably take Tampa. Yeah, I figured. But minus six, Tampa is going from sunny, that, warm Florida nebulous? to cold Chicago. Mm, there's that. Um, you know, Grant, they have they have Mike Evans who played really well last week. Uh, yeah, but then it's like, is, is, uh, is Tampa's quarterback situation equipped right. for cold weather Chicago? Right, that's that's what I'm thinking. Soldier Field, 1 p.m. on a Sunday. That's that's kind of my my take for Chicago. I think they can, I think they can win this game by by you know seven. Probably pretty brisk. Yeah, you know, Bears were were kind of starting to put things together last week. Jay Cutler had 330 yards, three touchdowns. Alshon Jeffrey had 11 receptions, 135 yards, and one of those touchdowns. So, yeah, I mean, they're kind of starting to look like the the team they were earlier in the year when they were playing well. So, I don't know. I think against Tampa, they can they can build on that and and be, blow them out. Blow them out. But I wouldn't go that far. Well, by when I say blow them out, I mean win by seven. Cover the spread. <laughs> yeah. Blow them out. But we'll see, we'll see. So you're taking you're taking Tampa. Yep. All right. How about this next one? This next one's fun. Whoa, 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 whoa! Pump the brakes. Whoa. What I? Oh, uh, that's it for the one o'clock's. I think. I think so. Uh, Isn't it? I think so. I think you're. I think he. Uh, sh- sh- Let me yes. Check. Yeah. That's it. Yep. All right. Uh, favorites and not favorites. Favorite. Uh, there's not really. Kind of like Jets and Buffalo. Yeah. It's got some history to it. Yeah. I mean, it's a division game. They're both kind of, like you said, they're both kind of out of it. I mean, the Jets are definitely out of it, and the Bills are right there. Um, yeah. No, wait. I changed my mind. Uh, Detroit, New England. Yeah. That'll be the one to watch. That'll, that'll be, be the good. close team. I think, I think Bengals, Texans would be good, too. Yeah. They've just because, to just because I think that'll be a little bit closer of a, of a game. Yeah, Texans have to... Uh, it's a must-win for them. Yeah. For the Bengals, I don't know. It's a... We wouldn't hate if we win. Right. I don't Worst, think anybody would hate if they won. 
I mean, they as in themselves, mm. not like the Bengals, them. So the, the royal the, we. The royal we, yes. Uh, worst game? Uh, Tampa, Chicago? That, that or maybe... Yeah, yeah, probably that one. Probably Tampa, Chicago would be my, my worst one. Every, every, every other game, somebody's got something to fight for. Chicago's just kind yeah. of bleh, kind of that nebulous at the bottom of the NFC North. Jacksonville Indy. Indy's got something. Cincy Houston. Green Bay. Yeah, Green Bay. Minnesota's got history to it. Yeah, Tampa yeah. Chicago. That's the pooper. I agree. All right, we ready for the four o'clocks? Now we're ready. All right, now we're ready. We got uh, Arizona at Seattle. Seattle's minus six at home against the best team in the NFL. Well, clearly I don't know what's up because I don't really agree with that. No? No, it's, this is, this will be the one to watch because, uh, Arizona gets their big test with Drew Stanton in Seattle, but is in Seattle a big deal anymore? I don't know. We'll find out. Yeah. I mean, as long I think as long as the Cardinals can stop Marshawn Lynch, they yeah, you true. know they can win that game because Seattle's passing game isn't the greatest. Nope. You know, Russell Wilson's always a threat just because he can run, but yeah, but that's the running game. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, run is in like extend plays break out of the pocket, you know, break tackles, that sort of thing. The Royal run, <laughs> the Royal run. Yeah. The editorial run. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll take Arizona plus six. Yeah. That's uh, how I feel yeah, too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Tease it to a pick em. Yeah. That would be interesting. Would you take Seattle if it was a pick em? Uh, no, I think I would still take Arizona. They're just they're just playing really really well, and it's kind of hard to pick against them right now. Yeah, that's how I feel too. Yeah, especially at at plus six. Plus six. Yeah. Uh, let's see. We got St. Louis at San Diego. San Diego's minus five. Tough. This one. yeah, this one's a little tough. I'm a little concerned about this one. Tough one. One you probably want to steer clear of. Yeah. I mean, St. Louis played extremely well, obviously, last week against against the Broncos, and San Diego scraped out a win against Oakland. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with with San Diego right now, but they're just not not playing as well as they were earlier this year. It's a frisky four and six for yeah. St. Louis versus a uh, what's the opposite of robust? Unrobust. <laughs> a lackluster six and four. I'm gonna look up an antonym for that. Lackluster, yeah, that works. All right, what's an antonym? I'm gonna, you know, having having said that, as poorly as the Chargers have played, I'm I'm gonna take them. Gonna really? Take them at, yeah, I'm gonna take them at minus five. Why? Uh, I just don't think St. Louis is is that good on the on the road. They're two and three on the road. Um, yeah, their cons- their consistency is an issue. Yeah. Yeah, you know, one one week they're fantastic, another week they're you know they get blown out. So here we go, unsound. That's the that's the unsound. All right, unsound. An unsound six and four. Yeah, yeah. I'm just looking at St. Louis. St. Louis's losses this year were Minnesota, Dallas, Philly, San Fran, Arizona, Minnesota, and Kansas City. Although, except for except for Minnesota, all their losses were against. Tough teams. All right now, I'm kind of rethinking, talking myself out of it. Yeah, but San Diego's losses were. Uh, am I on the right team? I'm not on the right team. Yeah, San Diego was Arizona, Kansas, Denver, Miami. Yeah. So yeah, yeah they they also lost tough teams too. They got killed in Miami, but still, yeah. The other three, yeah. Can't fault them for that. Yeah, it's kind of. I don't know. This this game might might be uh closer, so maybe I maybe I should go with St. Louis. Ooh, it's a battle of battle of spreads. Yeah. You know what? I I talked myself into I'm I'm gonna go with St. Louis. St. Louis a plus five. 
Okay. I think I think San Diego will win, but I think it'll be a that's unexpected field goal game. Okay. You see you see how I did that? I see that. Yeah. And now San Diego is going to win by six. That's what's going to happen. Well, <coughs> here's the tricky part. Uh, Ryan Matthews is back, and he had 16 carries, but they still gave Brandon Oliver 13 carries. Yeah. Yeah, I think part of that, too, is just so that Ryan Matthews didn't get a heavy workload right off the bat. Just ease him in. I can see yeah. that. I can see that. Yeah. I think you're right. So, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what Sean Hill can do against San Diego. Sean Hill and the Rams of Los Angeles. That means St. Louis. <laughs> Getting ahead of that myself. That might that might happen. Who knows? Getting ahead of myself. It's cyclical. Yeah. yeah. Welcome back. Who do we have next? Miami at Denver. Denver's favored by seven and a half. That's that's a kind lot of a, t- a point. Yeah, especially with with the way Miami's been playing. Miami's three and two on the road. Yeah. Which means they're yeah, also three and two at home, so even Stevens. Even Steven. And Miami's losses were Detroit, Green Bay, Kansas City, and Buffalo. Can't fault them for that. Yeah. I mean, if That's... you if you if you put a thumb over that loss against Detroit and just imagine that Miami actually won, because you mm-hmm. know, as I like to remind people, I think Detroit's full of poop. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you do that, they've won five in a row. Yeah. You know, air quotes, five in a row. Yeah, that's true. I'm just looking. Let's see. They lost Detroit by four. They lost at Green Bay by three. Kansas City they lost by 19. Buffalo by 19. But those were... Weeks two and three, so that was early before their defense really stepped up. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna take Miami. I'm gonna take Miami with at plus seven and a half. You just think seven and a half is too much? Yeah. Okay. Wait, what time? It's, uh, it's, it's a see. four. Isn't okay. It? All right. Yeah, I, th- I think. Yeah, yeah. It is. It's an East team going West. Don't they get the benefit? Yeah. Isn't it it's, a reverse? The sure. Inverse. Yeah. West um, keep going mid, east, you get mid, Midwest. Oh, it's mountain time. It doesn't yeah. count as much. No, I, I just think Miami's. I don't know. It's tough because I feel like Payton's going to come out pissed off after last week's uh, loss to St. Louis. But Miami's defense is just so good. Yeah, it's just so good. Battle of wills. It is. I'm I'm taking Denver because uh, it's sort of like the incumbent. I need to I need to feel like Denver's not. Uh, playing at top level before I start counting them out. Yeah, sort of as a, you know, can't think of the word. I don't know. I don't know what word you're going for. I don't know either. Um, basically, what I'm trying to relay is that I'm pretty much penciling in Denver as long as it's not an egregious spread. Okay. And I don't feel like seven and a half is at that point, and I don't yeah. feel like Denver's at that point either. Okay. Now, one thing to consider, and I haven't. Let's see if I can uh, check here real quick. Emmanuel Sanders uh, went out true. last week with that hard hit. And let's see. Julius Thomas was also out. So let's see what the update is on that here real quick. Because I didn't hear if Sanders was expected back this week or not. Here's a, here's a little uh, nugget of information for you. The last mm-hmm. time... Peyton lost two in a row. Was weeks two and three in 2012. Hasn't done it since. Hmm. Let's see. And they did lose last week. Uh, running back Monte Ball restrained his groin. Julius Thomas suffered a sprained ankle. And Emmanuel Sanders went through the post concussion protocol. Uh, Tom Julius Thomas is day to day, so he most likely will be back. Uh, let's see. And yeah, Emmanuel Sanders will probably be. There'll probably be a little bit more news on him during the week. Um, you know, as they go through the whole concussion thing. 
So that's just something to think about too. Those are those are two big Peyton Manning weapons. Yeah, but if this were a sports movie, this is where uh, the little engine that could Wes Welker comes off the bench and scores eight million points, and then he and Peyton high five, and then they carry him off on his shoulders into the locker room. You think so? Yeah, why not? I don't know. Well, I mean, I guess it could happen. Welker's been kind of kind of quiet this year. You know, he, granted, he did miss four games at the beginning of the year, but he hasn't has his name hasn't really been mentioned a whole lot. Well, that's what I mean. Now he gets bumped yeah. up from the uh, depth chart. Oh, even even ESPN notes. However, he could see a spike in usage in week twelve. Yeah, Reason it's true. Mind. It all it's 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 writing itself. He had four passes for 28 yards in the loss of the Rams. Let's see. Did you are you taking Miami or Denver? You picked Miami, didn't Miami. you? Miami. Yeah, I'll take Miami. Points. You made a point about the points. Welker has yet to top 60 yards in a game this year. Yeah, that's fine. He'll do it now. All right. He'll be my we'll, thriller for next week. We'll we'll keep an eye on that. Side side bet. Or over under on Welker's receiving yards this week. So, Ooh, so, who gets who gets more who has more yards? Jonas Gray rushing yards or uh Wes Welker receiving yards? Mm, that is that is interesting. Are you writing these down? Not really. Okay. We'll we'll remember probably. Not really. Maybe. Probably not. Well, you know what? This is all recorded, so we can always go back. If only there was a record of this. Yeah. Uh, Next up, we have Washington professional football team at the San Francisco 49ers. San Francisco is minus nine. It's a weird line. It is. It's a weird line. San Francisco did play well against the Giants. They did force. uh, Yeah. Eli Eli tied his career high in interceptions with five. Yeah. It's not hard to win when the other quarterback throws five interceptions. Yeah. Battle three and seven and six and four. RG three. Like I, I didn't watch much of the Washington game on Sunday because it was, uh, it was behind a, a pillar, so I couldn't really see it. But yeah, it's a really war screen game anyway. Uh, yeah, there really, there really wasn't much to see, unless you're a Tampa Bay fan. So I don't have a lot of faith in in RG three or uh, or Washington in general. So I'm going to take San Francisco. I'm taking. Washington because of the points. Okay. Because of the points. It's too many. Uh, I don't know that. uh, I mean, San Francisco scored 16 points off of five interceptions. Yeah. You got more points off the turnover than that. But Washington scored seven points against the Bucks and gave and gave up 27. And I, I would rank the 49ers above the Bucks. Well, I would rank the Broncos above the Rams. Well, yeah. I'm just saying. Snooty comment. Just making you think. Yeah. All right. So you're sticking with Washington? Yep. All right. Nine just points. Too many. Stri- strictly because of the line is too high. Too many points. Okay. If I tease that down, yeah, um, there you go. Get get San Fran minus three. Eh, it's different. Yeah. How about this next one? We got a NFC uh, East division rival game. We got Dallas at the New York Giants. Dallas is minus three and a half, coming off the bye. If history is uh, any indicator, this is probably where Dallas hits their slide. They're seven and three. They're not in first place because of some tiebreaker mumbo jumbo. But they're they're doing too good for going into week twelve. Mm-hmm. They've got Giants, Eagles twice, Bears, Colts, and the Washington professional football team. Uh, if they go one and five in the remaining games, they'll be eight and eight, which is normally where they kind of level off in seasons past. 
How many times have they gone eight and eight? They went eight and eight three times the last three seasons. Here's here's something to consider. Why skew from tradition? The Giants are worst in the league in opponent rushing yards. Oh, that does set up nicely. I mean, I'm I'm taking Dallas, but I'm just I'm just saying this is things have happened. Things happen. Yeah, they they're giving up an average of 145 yards rushing. Oh, while Dallas, if you recall, is currently second in the league in rushing at 153 yards a game. So you got basically the top rushing team, rushing offense, going against the worst rushing defense. And a 22nd ranked pass defense in the Giants. And I think you should just remember that the Giants will probably be wearing their blue uniforms. And in Pac-Man, when you eat a power pellet, the ghosts turn blue. And then Pac-Man goes after the the ghosts. So maybe it'll be DeMarco Murray going against that Giants defense going abba, 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 abba. I, I hope he I hope he goes crazy and then someone makes like a YouTube video a meme with, with, with like with the Pac-Man. Pac-Man yeah yeah that'd be pretty good yeah yeah I'm taking Dallas too if you haven't figured it out it's like one part is Tony Romo running away from a sack and then the next scene it's <laughs> it's DeMarco Murray just yeah bulldozing over somebody yeah three and a half points that's weird it's like Vegas knows something uh-oh, now I'm concerned. What's Don't you feel like that's not a lot of points? Well, I think it's only For because... Dallas, I think it's only because they're on the road. Yeah, but that means they should... Six and win. a half at home? Right? Mm. If they were home, this would basically be a, a six you're, and a half point. You're right, but even that seems kind of low. I think it's just because the Giants have have been able to play some tough games. What is he like going to cut up that Dallas defense? Pfft. Child, please. <laughs> yeah, uh, Giants haven't won since the beginning of October. Giants haven't won since the last time they made candy corn, which is nineteen twelve. <laughs> They've lost five straight. That's not historically true. To Philly, Dallas, Indy, Seattle, San Fran. Giants haven't won since candy corn was given out for an annual holiday. Is that true? Well, before that. The 5th, yeah, before that. 5th of October. Yeah. Yeah, Dallas Dallas beat them last time by 10 in Dallas. Dallas is fresh, coming off the bye. Yeah, but yeah. It's bad. Well, maybe that's why the, the spread is a little lower than, than you might expect. They're taking into account the uh well, maybe that's it. The the bad luck bye week. Bad luck bye. But I'm still taking Dallas. Starring Walter Matthau, Tatum O'Neill, Jackie O'Harely. No, that's bad news bears. Wrong one. Close enough. Close enough. All right. We got uh Baltimore at New Orleans. New Orleans is minus three. Hard one to gauge. Interconference showdown. It's tough on the gauge. Baltimore coming off the bye. Heading down to New Orleans after New Orleans got pumped out by Cincinnati last week. Brandon Cooks is out. And yet New Orleans is the favorite. And yet New Orleans is the favorite. Basically, if you know if this were a neutral field, they'd be it'd be a pick'em. Even Steven. So, so with, this Brandon, were, with Brandon yeah. Cooks out, let's see who they, according to ESPN, what they think their leading skill player is going to be. They think it's going to be Colston. Not Jimmy Graham. Mm, he's a close second. Jimmy Graham hasn't done a lot this season. No. No, he hasn't. Drew Brees hasn't done a lot. Yeah, that's Marcus true. Marcus Colson hasn't done a lot. Saints, uh, let's see. Since their bye week, they're two and three. Lost to Detroit by one. Beat Green Bay by 21. Beat Carolina. 
lost to San Fran in overtime, then lost to Cincinnati last week. They've already lost two straight at home. Oh, boy. I said New Orleans. I'm not sure why. I think I just gave them the benefit of the home team. Yeah, I'm going to take Baltimore. Okay. It's only natural. I think they're a little more well-rounded. Plus, they're getting plus three. Yeah, plus they're coming off the bye, so put that in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> As it comes back to bite me in the butt later on. Bad man. luck bye. Yeah. It's going to break one of these weeks, so I feel like it has to. Right? Right? I don't know. It, maybe not. I don't know. All right, what's your favorite uh and when it doesn't o'clock? when it doesn't, I'm gonna make up a song all on my own about bad luck buys. All right. It's gonna go I'll, to the tune of Goodbye Stranger. <laughs> I look forward to hearing that. Alright. What's your favorite favorite non one o'clock? Arizona Seattle. Yeah. It's a big game. It's a big game. Huge. I agree. Yeah, that's my favorite, too. Big game. Bear fill up on your Fritos, your Mr. Pib, your candy corn Oreos. Seattle. Yeah, Seattle and and Niners are are fighting for second place in that division right now. So Cardinals Cardinals loss here could uh, really make things interesting going into the last few weeks of the season. Yeah, Cardinals loss would vindicate me not putting cookies down on Arizona winning the division. (laughs) Well, now they're going to because you didn't put cookies down. Right? Wait, 10 and 1, 6 and 5. No, I was just, I was trying to figure out if, if, if Arizona winning would ice the division for them. And it doesn't. Oh, uh, no. Not mathematically. But no, they, they need a couple more. All but. All right. Yeah, so there's a lot of good stuff. A lot of good stuff to look forward to this week. A few good uh, division games, a few good interdivisional games, a few terrible games. Who picks which? Yeah. What game is on what screen? Is it like the customers or they? No, the people no, at the they establishment have, just have a pretty good. Yeah, like for like when bad. when you walk in, they already have like the big screens listed. Like this is what team is going to be on this game, or on this is what team's going to be on this TV, this TV. So that way, people who are fans of said teams can sit accordingly. I was going to say, do you pick your seat accordingly? Uh, we basically sit in the same spot, and we kind of keep an eye on basically every game except the one behind the pillar and the one to the far left. Other than that, we can and and directly in front of us is a red zone channel, so we kind of get oh. get updates on that as well. So that's kind of nice, pretty enjoyable. So. Usually a nice little little way to spend a Sunday afternoon. Watching football, eating some wings, yelling at the TV. So yeah. What's their signature dish? Is it the wings? Um No. I usually get a burger. They have uh pretty inexpensive burgers and they're and they're a good size. So I usually go with that. Yeah, and there's uh like if you go to the, there, it's it's a casino so like there's a downstairs level with some other uh, some other food establishment so I'll get sometimes get like a chicken wrap, you know, <coughs> mix it up a little bit, keep things interesting, keep things fresh. Yeah. All right. You have anything else you want to add for week twelve? Getting close. The season seems like it's flying by, doesn't it? We're getting close. We're uh, 66.6 repeating ways, you know, through the season. After this week. It's, is right. it? No, there's se- wait, 17 weeks. Well, 16 games, sorry. Oh, yeah. I, close I, I rounded. Yeah, I rounded. Good enough. I rounded. That's good. I like that. I'm not a statistician, so. Let's see. Close, let's close uh, enough. Um, where was I? I'm just trying to think of who... How many teams are truly out of it? Uh, truly. Truly out of it? Truly uh, out see. of it. Because I don't think it's that many. Let's take a look here. I would say Giants. I'm, I'm working backwards. I would say Giants, Redskins, Rams, 
Buccaneers, Bears. I would, I would, I would probably chalk the Bears up. Uh, I would say both Bills and the Jets. They're out. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, Jaguars, Vikings. Titans and Oakland. So what is that? 11? 11-ish teams? It's a little more fickle because of this eight division stuff. Yeah. We've, we've heard my thoughts on that. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're not a fan. I'm not, I'm not no. a fan. All right. Yeah, so I, I would say right now there's probably 11 teams that are... that, that we could... Uh, You've eliminated almost... Thirty-three point three 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 repeating teams from contention. Sounds about right this time of the year. Yeah, since we've almost got thirty-three point three 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 percent of the season remaining. Yeah, it all works out. It all works out in the end. It's one to one. Yeah. All right. So that's it for football. Uh, Ludd, you got some some new comics for tomorrow. Uh, there's a lot of books, that's for sure. Uh, some new creative teams. Okay. Plenty of choices, though. That's my, that's the crux. That's the thesis. All right. And that, that, uh. A lot of books. That post will be going out tomorrow, correct? Yes, it will. What, Wednesday. New comic book Wednesday. My little Wednesday roundup. Check out the post. Uh, had a lot of, a lot of reviews on games and, uh, some movies, too. You, you did Big Hero 6? Yes, I did. You did Blaze Rush. I did. I did. Uh, Big Hero 6 sounded good. I, th- I think I might have to check that out. Um, It's kind of like Incredibles plus Up. Okay. Does that mean I'm going to cry? Uh, I cried twice. <sighs> Once during the... They're pre- animated movie, movies. They're animated not supposed short. to... Short. And that's right. just because of my relationship i have with chino it was not <laughs> unlike that Ch- chino the cat yes all right it was a dog but all right well it, yeah you you'd know why yeah. you'd know why okay i'll have to uh i'll have to prepare myself for that then but uh yeah and hopefully i'm shooting for the end of the week to have a review out for assassin's creed rogue Nice. So you can keep an eye out for that. So yeah. Been Should good. I look towards getting that if I get more games, or should I? Or am I just gonna have to wait to, to find out what your yay or nay was? Uh, I'm still kind of early in the game itself, so I still want to play it some more. But so far, it's it's been interesting. Um, interesting. Okay. Yeah. Bas- basically, the plot of Assassin's Creed Rogue is you start off as an assassin. No. Uh, an, yeah, yeah. An event occurs, and the assassin, your character, decides to switch sides to the enemy. Oh. Uh, you know, the quote-unquote enemy. There's, there's two sides: the assassins and the Templars, who are always at odds. And he, you know, converts from one to the other, and you know, chaos ensues. So that's that's, that's kind of where I am in the game. So that's yeah, interesting. yeah. It's definitely a little, little different take on the series, but um, yeah. Yeah, so that's uh, kind of what we have in store. There's going to be a bunch of other stuff on the site as well, so be sure to check it out, www.entertainmentbooter.com. And you can follow us on Twitter, at no punt intended. That's no punt, the number 10, D-E-D. And be sure to check us out if you're into video games on twitch.tv. You can search for us. Uh, Entertainment Booter is our name there. We do a lot of game streaming as well, so new retro you know whatever your heart desires we do it it's all there it's all there all right so i think that'll do it for this week and thank you all for listening and lot do you have a witty sign off that's that that's that's that that's the sign off i guess all right i'll think of another one okay well, maybe we'll, that should be it I'll, I'll just i'll think of something else i'll think of something else all right we're done down.